recent update to Wago's eCockpit programming software has enabled the Wago line of PFC products to act as an Ethernet IP adapter. Uh, this means that it can communicate with Ethernet IP uh, servers like Rockwell controllers uh, and others. Uh, this is going to be a two-part video. Part one is going to be setting up a PFC as an Ethernet IP adapter uh, using a Rockwell Compact Logix controller. Or part two is going to demonstrate setting up uh, a second server to communicate with the same adapter, meaning we're going to separate the ports. So uh, if you have the hardware, follow along. Um, for phase two, we'll be using a Raspberry Pi, but we'll get to that in video two. Now just some general housekeeping, we're going to go to the web-based management and verify that uh, it is in fact using the eCockpit runtime and that we have a static IP address set. Once we've done this, we can go to eCockpit and create a new project. Once our project opens, we'll select our controller and with any project, we'll assign an IP address and scan this for the I.O. modules. We won't be using the I.O. modules, but we'll need it to uh, compile and download the project. Now we'll go to PLC PRG and we're going to start in the library manager and uh, you can right click add library and then we'll search for Ethernet IP. Uh, we'll add this library, the Wago app Ethernet IP adapter library and if you just scan it you can see the, the function block that will allow us to set this up as an adapter and then it's also good to get familiar with the um, structures that are in there as well, the enumerations. Next we're going to create an instance of the function block. We're going to call this FBEIP adapter. and We're going to search for the um, object type which you'll find in the um, input assistant. Then we'll go ahead and call this instance in our programming window by using the input assistant again and going to instance calls. Resets our window, click OK and it will add all the fields. So if we uh, create variables in these fields, they'll adopt the variable type that we need. We'll start with adapter open. Uh, we'll add an object adapter status. Adapter error. Uh, a boolean for uh, is open. Another boolean for is idle. We'll uh, add the enumeration for the adapter fault reaction uh, and we're going to initiate this with zero which means everything will go to zero if it loses comms and then we'll, ha we'll add the nick as well and the nick will also initiate a zero which will use um, just the switched ports um, exclusive owner connected then the listen only is connected uh, and inputs only connected all of these booleans next there's a diagnosis object and then we'll add our data. So the function block will automatically resize the EIP uh, adapter for the size of the data array. So we're just going to do 10 bytes in and 10 bytes out. Uh, so we're going to change this to an array of 0 to 9 bits, bytes, excuse me. And we'll do the same thing on the output. We'll make this an array of 0 to 9 bytes as well. Click OK and we can connect now to the controller. We'll download this and we'll put it in run and uh, we won't enable this block yet, we'll just have it sitting in run. Next we'll go to our RS Logics project. We'll create a new project called EIP Adapter or EC Adapter. Um, we'll start a new project and the first thing we'll go to Tools and we're going to add our EDS file. So we'll register a new EDS file when this opens. And we're going to select the EDS file um, that's available from Wago. Um, and we'll just click through this menu now. Once we've done with this, we click Finish. Uh, and it'll add this device to our catalog. Now we go down to the uh, Ethernet port. We add a new device. And uh, you can search for Wago in the field. Um, select the EDS file. And so this is very straightforward. All we need to do is we need to give it a name. We'll call this Wago PFC. We need to give it an IP address. And then we need to change the size. So if we click this change button, um, it defaults to 32 bytes in and out. We just gonna, we're just going to change this to 10 based on the size of our function block. Click OK. And now we're done. We've added the device. The device is really ready to go at this point. But just for some verification, we'll uh, do just a very simple routine. We're going to do an add block. 
uh, and I'm going to increment uh, the first output byte is all. So we're going to select the first uh, output byte position. We're going to add one to it every time this cycles, and we're going to write that into the output byte position one. Now we click uh, uh, download, and we've download we download this to our controller. Um, it'll ask to go in pro in uh, run mode. We want to go into remote run. And you'll see we're still not connected. It says uh, no I.O. But once we enable this, um, we clear the errors. And you can see we're now getting data. So we're going to uh, add just a quick line. We're going to write the input byte uh, position 0 to output byte position 0. So we can verify we have data going both ways. We download this to the project. Uh, and we go back to the uh, RSLogix. And we'll monitor the controller tags and look at the WAGO data. And there we have the input data and the output data. So there you have the WAGO PFC set up as an Ethernet IP adapter uh, using the Rockwell Compact Logics and RS Logics software. Uh, come back for part two, where we add a Raspberry Pi as an Ethernet IP server uh, and turn this into a redundant um, adapter with two masters talking to it. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe.